Hey, Sports Seriously fans, we have a special conversation for you. NBA draft prospect Keegan Murray stopped by to talk about his favorite player, his life motto, and he didn't hold back when we asked who he thinks is the best on the court. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Okay, here's my chat with Keegan. When it comes to how you view yourself in your class, where do you feel like you rank essentially? I feel like for me, um, anytime I step on the court, I feel like I'm one of the best, the best player on the court. Um, so uh, I think I'm one of the best players in this class. And I know that um, with the I have, I'll have a good career. So I'm just excited for it to get started. Obviously, these teams are picking in the top five for a reason. Um, what do you feel like you can bring to the court, but also as a franchise as a whole? Yeah, I think for me, my versatility is kind of the big thing. Um, being able to play different positions, guard different positions, um, things like that. Uh, I feel like I bring in a winning mindset uh, to, onto the court, um, winning culture. Um, so I think that's that's a big thing uh, mentally and physically. So apparently you're one of the most sought after NBA or NBA ready prospects. Why is that? I think that's just because um, I've been I've been around a little bit longer than a couple of other guys um, in the class. Um, I feel like in college I was able to assert myself um, on different aspects of the game, offensively and defensively, uh, and be be effective uh, on and off the ball. Um, so I think that plays a factor into that. Uh, I feel like my mindset's in the right place. I feel like I'm mature. Uh, mature I'm going into the league so I feel like that's that's a compliment compliment to myself and what I've what I've been going through these last couple of years so you've been one of the lucky guys to take advantage of the uh NIL um when it does come to that do you feel like you were able to take advantage of that during your time at Iowa during your your final year I think for me NIL wasn't all about money so what I did um, I tried to work a lot with the Children's Hospital um, at the University of Iowa. Um, so I was able to donate a lot of my uh, ad clothing, a clothing line, and I was able to donate um, half of it to the Children's Hospital. Um, so that was a really cool experience. I got to interact with a lot of people in there um, because of it. Met uh, a girl named Camden um, who was in the hospital for a couple of years, and now she's out. Um, in high school, and she's been a really big factor in my life. So um, I feel like that's the pro side I took to NIL, and uh, I feel like for me, I've, I've strived in it. I've been seeing on your social media posts and your clothing line, for those who don't know, what is FNO? Does that mean fear no one? Yeah, yeah, fear no one. Just I feel like that's just kind of something that resembles my persona on, on and off the court. Uh, I kind of have that mentality where I don't care who's lined across from me. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm the best player on the court, and I feel like um, I'm a really good person in life. So that's just kind of my mentality. There's been a lot of talk about dynasties recently with the Warriors winning their fourth title. What's your earliest, I guess, and your fondest memory of a great NBA team you you loved growing up? Yeah, I think uh, it was probably the Miami Heat team uh, with LeBron, Dwayne Wade, mm -hmm. Chris Bosh. Um, that was kind of the team that I kind of watched a lot um, and was really great. Obviously the Spurs um, during that time were really good as well. Um, so those two teams I think were the first, um, my first experience was seeing a dynasty. I um, mean, obviously the Warriors have built a great one um, these last couple of years. So I feel like uh, you never know what team could be next. Speaking of Steph Curry, do you feel like he's, um, do you think he's top 10 all time after finally getting his fourth ring? I feel like he's proved himself. Uh, I feel like he's definitely, definitely top 10, um, definitely in that category of the greatest players ever play the game. So um, he's earned his way up there and uh, just excited to see what he does in the future. To you, who do you feel like is the GOAT of this past generation? Steph or LeBron? I mean, you can definitely pick both or what, what would you say? <laughs> I think they both, they both have arguments. Um, to say who's the, who's better. Um, I think LeBron might have the edge. They both have four rings. Um, I feel like LeBron going back to his hometown, winning a championship, uh, that's kind of a really cool story. So I think that kind of that kind of puts him over the edge a little bit. And just obviously all the accolades that he's played, um, that he's done. But I mean, Steph has a he has a, a lot of more years left. So we'll we'll see what happens. We know you're here with us on behalf of Panini. So with that being said, um, if you could talk a little bit about what that partnership has been like for you. And also my fun question for you is if you could have any cards you ever wanted, which is a card that you would never sell. Yeah. So I've been 
grateful to be with Panini for a while now. Um, these last couple months, um, they've been really cool uh, for me um, just to be able to have my own card. I um, was able to sign my first one today just recently. So that was, that was a cool experience. Um, if I was to have a card that I wouldn't get rid of, it'd probably have to be a vintage Michael Jordan. I don't, I don't know what year, but just a vintage one. I think that'd be a really cool, really valuable um, piece to have. Hey, sports fans. If you want to watch more sports seriously, be sure to check out these clips right here. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all the great content from us here at USA Today Sports.